In Jamaica Magazine, we continue to big up our country as we look ahead to Heritage Week, which is actually next week, by the way. And that's not the only thing happening in the show. Well, they started to tell us things that we were doing and places that we were going and people that we were with, and it was just like, okay, do I know you? Well, we became very paranoid. It's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and one young lady tells her story of the danger she encountered online. Also, how much do you know about lupus? Get the facts from one woman living with the disease. I'm Theodore Henry. We have all that and so much more after this message. Come out and support Jamaica's Sunshine Girls as they compete in an exciting international test series. Jamaica will compete in a week of competition against Trinidad and Tobago's Calypso Girls, followed by the England Roses. The countries compete at the National Indoor Sports Centre on Arthurwind Drive, Kingston 5. Tickets are sold online at TicketPal.com and in limited amounts at the venue on match days. Feel the rhythm, catch the vibe with Jamaica's national netball team, the Sunshine Girls. It's, 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 it's Cool. Part of speech, verb, origin. Jamaican, meaning look. Used in a sentence, kude, translated as look there. Ku is more of a sound than a word, but it really adds that flavor to our dialect. Kuya, kupan dat. Kuyo, kupan women put in a satte soup. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Something you might add to your Saturday soup, Irish potato, and you want it to be locally grown, not true. There is a program that is making sure more of the potatoes in your pot is produced right here on The Rock. Watch this. We have the temperature, we have the good soil, we have experienced farmers, we have the technical staff from RADA. So we decided to, instead of we import table potato, we decided to import the seed. And that's where the program started. We go across the island in the Irish potato growing area and we conduct what is known as potato sensitization meeting where we give the farmers a theoretical experience of what is expected of them, how to grow, how to take care of your Irish and the ultimate return. For this season we have conducted 18 sensitization meetings and over 4,000 farmers have attended these meetings. The National Potato Program is good for the country, it's good for us. and. Um, I believe the government should continue. At the sensitization thing that we that we that I went at Christian, it was good to know that the government was in the act of actually assisting farmers and providing a way where farmers can get loan or same way they can get um potato assistance. What I get there was when the minister asked us the farmers, 
say if you plant one acre last year, try and plant two acres this year in order to build Jamaica. So that is my goal. Rather help us with seed and fertilizer. We plant whatever we get and try to take care of it with the chemicals they assist us with and the fertilizer. And with that going, we get a good result. The heal has been great. Hence, our life actually improved by the heal that we get. And from, from that crop, we are able now to purchase our own potato seeds for the spring crop. The rather officers tell us how to prepare land, when to pre start to prepare land, because the preparation is really key to this Irish puddle thing, you know. So you start prepare from early, and by seeds come all land supposed to finish plow by that, and just ready to maybe cut your drills and plant. With land preparation, we encourage farmers to prepare the land ahead of time. We usually recommend two to three months, and in heavier soils like clay soil, we recommend like up to four months. Spray at least once weekly and spray preventatively. However, in condition, when the conditions become more moist, we encourage them to spray at least twice per week or the, 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 the spray, spray period becomes shorter. We encourage the farmers to cut the field twice per week, at least they can do it more and they'll pick up on the different pests and disease. Some of the diseases that affect Irish potato would be like blight, we have early blight, that's alternaria, and late blight, phytophthora. In 2008, Jamaica was producing only 30% of, of the Irish being consumed. Today we are producing over 90% of our national demand. Step up your stride, make we work like a harder. Do it like Veronica, more than a sofa. We can rise above the challenges and shine. Always with passion in your heart. Make a plan and stop all the hiding. You think I saw me reach out the edge? And now, flavoring today's show, a dash of heritage from the mouth of babes, reciting a piece from one of our cultural icons, Miss Lou. Shine up your shoes, girl, brush your hair, give clothes and body plenty care. Mind your man, don't forget how the untank in a brockless fear. Oh, Aki skin and ashes is me that he close them only hope. For me here put to the tell Jane say, they make good washing soap. She said, if you make the clothes and ashes, soak in the tub and rub on the aki skin. And, and so you rub, rub and so you scrub. scrub. Me have to try out everything. Me can't sit down and move.
As of May 31, whenever you are making local calls, you will have to use the area code 876 before you dial the existing seven-digit numbers in your contact list. This is because Jamaica will be receiving a new area code, 658. Yes, all Little Island will now have two area codes, and to ensure you're calling the right person, you will have to dial 10 digits. Don't worry, if this is new to you, you still have time to get used to it because there is a five-month permissive dialing period where you will be constantly reminded. Ten-digit dialing. Another step in making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. As we mentioned at the top of the show, it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, where Jamaicans are urged to think before clicking. Sure, the internet is a useful tool and a place where you can have fun, but it can be dangerous and you need to be careful. Don't take my word for it though, listen to this story. I'm Tony Anlati and I am a victim of cybercrime. It started when my friends and I were in school <laughs> and we all received a friend request from a weird name. We didn't know who it was at the time but because we all got the friend request we figured more likely it was a real person so everybody accepted this person. Wrong move. So everything was fine in the initial stages, but maybe like a week or two after everybody accepted the friend request. Some strange things started to happen. They would send us messages, sometimes individually, or they'd send the same message to everybody just to see what kind of different responses we would have. And it was, it was very weird, to say the least. But then after that, it's like they upped the ante a little bit to start. Well, they started to tell us, things that we were doing and places that we were going and people that we were with and it was just like okay do I know you well we became very paranoid it's sensitive information that this person is telling you you know it's places that you never really announce it to people that you're going here so when you see somebody send you a message to say oh you're here with this person and this person you start to look at your friends now like it's you I know you're playing with me you just talk the truth and let's move on but it wasn't any of them when everything happened at that time we had a lecturer who was a DSP so we started to get advice from him asking you know what to do and at that point he told us that the best thing to do is stay as safe as possible and so we started to leave school extra early but we sort of just took matters into our own hands to try and find a person ourselves. We googled how to trace IP addresses and that's how we found out that the person who was doing this was actually a member of the school community or they would be attached to the school Wi-Fi at the same time that we were at school. Eventually it stopped because we made an uproar about it in spaces where we suspected the person was. So we began to speak very loudly about it. We let them know that we would be pressing charges and we'd go out with a bag of things. We didn't know who the person was, but we figured more likely that they heard us loud and clear. To this day, we don't have a definitive answer as to who the person was. Yes, we have our suspicions. We have our suspicions. But I can't really point at somebody to say, you are the person who was doing that. And that's a little scary to me. Looking back now, I think we all would have been much better off and a lot less paranoid if we kept ourselves to ourselves and only added people on social media that you know for a fact are your friends. Um, if somebody doesn't have a profile picture, that's probably not somebody that you want to share your information with. To everybody else, I just say be very careful on social media because things and times have changed and there are some people out there with really malicious intent. So you, you just have to be very, very careful, be observant, be vigilant. So you've seen what happens if technology is used in the wrong way. 
But up next, I look at the wonders it can do if used just right. It's all around us. It influences how we work, learn, live, play and plan for the future. GIS is the short form of Geographic Information System. It's a computer-based system built to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage, and display all kinds of spatial or geographical data. In geography class in high school, persons were taught that in geography, we're able to locate where features are using coordinates. That's the basis of GIS knowing where these features are on the Earth's surface and being able to represent that within a computer-based environment where that is seen visually. So it's a support tool that we use to provide additional um, extension to any business process. And with this GIS technology, the government has been mapping Jamaica's course on the information highway. Leading that charge is the Land Information Council of Jamaica, LICJ, a mandate held since 1992. Jamaica is considered the leading country within the English-speaking Caribbean with regards to GIS. We're able to provide direction, policy development. In addition to coordinating the implementation of a national land information policy strategy, the LICJ has also been instrumental in developing a national GIS network. And with the foundation set, the Council is now focused on establishing and implementing a National Spatial Data Infrastructure, NSDI. Through that infrastructure, government will be able to capture, manage, maintain, integrate, discover, and distribute spatial data at all levels of society. The LICJ's mandate is executed through its Secretariat, the National Spatial Data Management Division, NSDMD. We provide a lot of technical support to all of these various government agencies that actively use GIS to carry out their mandate. We train these persons. Apart from that, we facilitate conducting GIS needs assessments. Government is currently the largest user of geospatial and related technologies. And that usage runs throughout government. It's seen in the water sector, transport, disaster management, environment management, national security, education, health, and agriculture. But no other area has seen the proliferation of GIS technology than that of land use and development. At the Urban Development Corporation, GIS is used to streamline operations in various departments, including estate management, business development, architecture, and corporate security. We are on the road now to our 50th anniversary, and uh, we see GIS as being that enabling tool to provide UDC you now with not just the way to make better decisions in development, but also improving UDC's image as a modern entity. The same is true for the National Land Agency's land titling, land valuation, surveys and mapping, and estate management divisions. A lot of the business processes that exist within the different uh, divisions have GIS tied into it. So for example, there is no way that somebody can, at present, um, acquire a new certificate of title without some work happening on the GIS end. The National Works Agency also uses GIS in project planning, land acquisition and location analysis. Everything that we do has a spatial component to it and it's hard to deny that GIS is going to play a role in all of that. Cost savings, greater efficiency, Faster decision making, improved communication and better record keeping are all derived from the use of GIS. And the private sector also has been getting in on the technology. Increasing GIS nationwide is also a focus for the LICJ and the NSDMD. To facilitate this, the government has signed an enterprise license agreement with the Environmental Research Institute. That agreement has been a game changer. It has allowed us to be more efficient you know, in terms of accessing the data and um, using it to provide more information and to engage also with the public as well. What it does is open up a whole new world. So there are almost no limits to what we can do with GIS and improving the way we handle our spatial data as a government. Public awareness has also been heightened with the GIS Day during Geography Awareness in November. 
That observation has been staged annually since 2003. In 2017, with the LICJ celebrating 25 years groundbreaking work, there will be a two-day GIS user conference in October. The conference will focus on national security for sustainable development under the theme Geospatial Technologies, Mapping Our Way to Secure Communities. As we strive to learn more about each other and the world around us, there is no doubt that GIS is the most practical and beneficial tool in this process. As Jack Dangamond, co-founder of the Environmental Systems Research Institute said, GIS is waking up the world to the power of geography, the science of integration and has the framework for creating a better future. We invite you to learn more about the GIS User Conference by visiting the webpage at gisuserconferenceja.com. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Now we're going to move out of the realm of technology and turn our focus on health. Specifically, a look at lupus, as it is also Lupus Awareness Month. Right now, find out more about this life-threatening illness through the eyes of someone living with the disease. I was diagnosed with lupus in 2008, but from my own knowledge of what is happening, I must have had lupus all my life. <laughs> as it were, because I've always been having symptoms. But the challenge that I had was that I was always misdiagnosed. And so that is the focus of my, um, the, the challenges in terms of, A, the doctors would think that I have something else and not lupus, but you'd have different symptoms. But I have systemic lupus, and lupus is not only systemic, but some persons just have what we call discord lupus or other little types, joint pains, and so on, but I have the full works. Well, I was extremely disappointed because I felt, oh my God, I have lived a, a good life. <laughs> I have always been um, careful about what I eat. I've always been sure to exercise. I've used to be nice and slim and beautiful. <laughs> and um, to hear that now I have this condition, I, I, did not be, I did not want to believe. And then it got worse after the diagnosis, you know, I had periods where I couldn't work at all. There was a four year period in my life that I never worked. I just couldn't work. I was just always sick. I was always in hospital. Sometimes I'm in intensive care, sometimes I am unconscious, sometimes I'm all kinds of things. So it has not been a very wonderful ride. <laughs> In 2014, I became, uh, my kidneys stopped working, so I was now in renal failure. And um, it means that I now have to go to dialysis. So there were days when I would just be so weak. My blood count, that's HB, would fall to a very low level. I had to get blood. I had to look at what I eat. I had to look at how much I do. I had no energy most times. I would just couldn't do anything, I just had to lie down in my bed. <laughs> so just different things, you couldn't walk sometimes, sometimes I can't, I can't um, talk clearly, sometimes I can't see, sometimes my hands are so sore and I can't use them, sometimes just different things, my lungs would fail, different things would happen. So I've been through the ropes. Mentally, it was devastating because I feel that me, and that's not supposed to happen to me. <laughs> so I went through that, that period. I actually went through a period of severe depression. I was just so depressed. I could not help myself. There were days I just cry and cry and cry. And part of that too is the medication that I take. 
um, some of the steroids make you depressed. And then you look into the mirror and you look at yourself and say, who is this? I don't know you. Can I tell you, I have learned to love life and to live. And that is what is important to me. Each day counts. And I believe that I should live each day to the fullest. There, with lupus, there is this uncertainty. I don't know when I will be unconscious again. I don't know when I will die. But I am going to maintain the quality of life and I'm going to have a good life and I'm going to live. I have good family support. My husband is extremely supportive, my son. Um, so I have them um, and I have good friends. Good friends, the saying goes, good friends are better than pocket money. Then there's also the Lupus Foundation, which is important. It, there is a support group there. There are excellent rheumatologists there who will provide advice and help and care and just information. There's a whole host of books and tapes and all kinds of things that you can get information from. There is also the website that you can look at and get information as well. I've actually gone for job interviews and I know I don't get a job because, not because I'm not qualified, but because I have lupus. So employers need to understand that people living with lupus can actually contribute and, you know, make adjustments. There are days, for example, after dialysis that I will come to work a little bit late, but I will work later to make sure that the time is there. I have learned that. <laughs> it has no boundaries, it has no behavior, it has no conscience, it has no purpose, it has no time. It does what it chooses to do whenever. And therefore you need to be aware of yourself and what are some of the things that are your triggers and therefore try to manage and monitor those. You must also be mindful of the medication that you have to take and take them carefully and take them well. You should also be mindful of your appointments with your doctors and make sure that you keep those appointments. I would say to you, help is available. Find some help, find some support. Talking about it helps. Um, don't feel that it, it is you are, because you're special or you're being punished why you have lupus, but recognize that this is something, this is just another thing that could happen to anybody. Anybody, color, class, or creed, rich or poor, man or woman. There are more women with lupus than men, but men have lupus as well. And so be aware of, of the symptoms, get help, get treatment. Don't hide away, don't think that people will be, because Jamaica is famous for that, but know that this is a condition that can be controlled, it cannot be cured, it can be controlled and you can maintain a healthy life. Seek to work, seek to be involved, do what you're doing, treat whatever is happening. If it's depression, get it treated, get treatment, get help. Help is available. To learn more about lupus, Contact the Lupus Foundation of Jamaica via their website, lupusfoundationjamaica.org or 754-8458. You may also visit them at 7 Barbados Avenue, Kingston 5. And that's it for today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. If you like the show, you can watch it again on our YouTube channel or on the JIS website. We are also on all the major social media platforms, so don't be shy. Stop by our pages and leave a comment. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.